so in today's video we're going to look at making a volcano like this one and then doing a chemical reaction based experiment to make the volcano erupt so stay tuned for the video guys you can make along with me So I've got a old squeezy bottle of um, tomato sauce which is now empty and I'm going to use this as the centre of my volcano. I like this shape because I think that it's going to produce a lot of bubble and as the lava fizzes over the top of my volcano it's going to push it up and out. So I like this long shape and I think that this is a really good kind of shape bottle to use. I'm going to start by gluing or sticking it to a base which is going to be just a nice square of cardboard. It doesn't really have to be square, it's just I took it off of a box and it just happened to be square. But you can use either a little bit of hot glue from a glue gun or tape, cello tape is fine. Use some tape and tape this down to your base to make the very centre of the volcano. So I'm going to do that and then secured I'll to, to the base, nice and easy using masking tape. I'm now going to take some old newspaper and I'm going to start to build up kind of like a pyramid shape but really rounded and it doesn't have to be particularly neat either I'm using forms of scrunch up newspaper so I'm going to start at the base and I'm just going to use a tiny bit of tape to stick it down doesn't really have to be that strong at this point because we are adding constantly adding to it okay so I'm just going to add a piece of tape there, I might add a bit to the top just to stick it to the bottle. And I'm just going to go around the whole thing, starting to build up my shape, just like that. Okay, so I'm going to build up. making it very wide and thick at the bottom and making it nice and small at the top. So you can start doing this. So here I'm just using two balls of newspaper and from the side profile you can start to see it sloping down. When you get a naturally occurring volcano, it usually is where two plates of the earth, and these are called tectonic plates, they've shifted and it's due to sometimes a drop in the ocean level um, or a change in the temperature of the core of the earth and they get pushed together and because they can't be pushed any further together they start to do this and start to push upright and that's why most volcanoes are this shape they're kind of like this triangular pointed shape and at the very top of the triangle is where the crust of the earth breaks underneath the earth's surface is a molten layer and that's where we're getting that really dense hot level of lava which moves from the center of the earth up through the tectonic plates, which have shifted, pushed together and broken open. And the force of pressure erupts from the volcano. So you're gonna try and create this shape, building up, mask, building up your layers of newspaper and masking tape like this. I'm gonna do that and then I'll come back to you once I've built it. And there you it. have it, there is one volcano. So as you can see, if I turn it around, it's not exact on either on any side, in fact, but I've got these lumps and bumps and stuff, and that makes it look a little bit more natural, okay? So you can see that it goes from a very wide base and it lifts up to a point at the top, and I've made sure not to cover that hole, which is where I'll be putting my lava solution when we make our volcano erupt. I've made sure that I've taped down to the base so that there's no holes, and as you can probably tell, I'm now going to cover this in paper mache or mud rock, just so it's nice and strong. That's the reason why I've completely covered all of my newspaper in masking tape, because newspaper is soluble, which means when it gets uh, wet, it completely loses its structure and it turns into more or less kind of like a slushy mess. So we don't want that to happen. We've worked very hard to make this shape and we want to keep it. So make sure you cover your newspaper completely if you're going to cover it in mud rock or paper mache. You don't have to at this point, you could leave it. 
You could even cover your bottle, which was glued to your base at the start, in some plasticine and create this shape using plasticine too. Now when plasticine gets wet, it also starts to break down, so you won't be able to reuse that volcano. My one's going to be reusable, I'm going to make sure that I can use it over and over and over again and I can create as many volcano avalanches as I want, okay? So, from this point, I'm now going to cover it in a layer of paper mache and then I'll come back to you once it's nice and dry. I've completely okay. covered mine in, um, I used mud rock but I could have used, like I said, paper mache um, and I'm now going to let it completely dry before I paint it. The nice thing about covering it in paper mache or mud rock is that it gives it kind of like a grainy rocky surface, you can sort of see it here. So when you paint it you're going to get a nice texture. So I do recommend making sure that this is fully dry before you add more moisture and more liquid onto this. Because if it's not dry it's going to crumple in. So again I'm going to leave this to dry and I'll come back and we'll start painting. So we're now going to just add some little dimension to our volcano. So I'm taking some black paint on a very dry kind of stiff bristly brush and you can see I'm not very neat at all I'm just dusting around wherever I find a little inward dent in my volcano this is completely optional I just think it makes your volcano look really cool and menacing so again I'm just working my way around you can see I'm not very neat I'm using the really dry stiff bristles to just push the paint into those dark crevices Anywhere where you have an indent inwards is where you're going to place your shadows. This is really simple to do and it's really effective. So I would really recommend if you want to make a volcano that looks really lifelike um, to take the time, an extra 10 minutes here, just to have a little fun with creating some shadows. Once I've done this black um, shadow paintwork, I'm going to move on to doing some light work, as we call it, or placing some highlights. Um, and that's gonna be done with white or slightly white gray paint. So here I've taken some of this white paint. I haven't washed my brush, I've kept the black paint on it. And that way I don't get stark white, I kind of get like a light gray color as my highlight. Any point where there are ridges that point upwards or stick out from the volcano, I'm just lightly dusting over it using the bristly brush to create some highlight. Nice and simple. Again, this is really easy to do. It's really effective, especially if you're going to record your volcano erupting. I recommend you take the time to do this if you have the extra time. Now, because I had that weird border around my volcano, I'm going to do some grass or, or some foliage painting. I've got some dark green paint back on the same brush. I haven't even washed it and I'm stamping some dark green paint into the cardboard. Then I'm going in with this light acid green, the same green that we use to decorate our dinosaur feet, hands and tail, um, and I'm stamping that on. After I am happy with that, I'm then going over with a light dusting of some really light yellow to finish off that foliage. Done. So into a glass, I have mixed some red food colouring with some bicarbonate of soda or baking soda and a little bit of water to create a bit of a slurry. Um, we're going to pour this into the centre of our volcano and that's going to act as our lava. So the baking soda in here is going to create a reaction with the vinegar and that's what's going to cause the eruption. Okay. So here we go, we're going to pour this into our volcano. Oh, I'm just doing something with the that is. <laughs> So we're going to add the vinegar, water and dish soap into this and then you better jump back Leon. Jump back! Whoa, that was good that one. <laughs> So let's look at this in slow motion again and explain what's happening. So there's a chemical reaction happening between the vinegar and the baking soda. This creates a gas called carbon dioxide. It's the very same gas that's in your fizzy drinks. 
So if you shake up a bottle of Coca-Cola, what happens inside the bottle? The gas gets really excited and tries to spread itself out. Since there's not enough room in the bottle, the Coca-Cola bursts out the top of your bottle and fizzes everywhere, creating an eruption of Coca-Cola. This is very similar to what's happening with our volcano here. To the baking soda mix, we've added an acidic substance, your vinegar, and it has reacted with the alkaline substance of the baking soda to create the carbon dioxide gas. And since there's not enough space inside the volcano to keep the gas inside, it causes this fizzy eruption of the substances and the dish soap creates that lovely bubbly silky texture as it runs down the sides of your volcano. Now there are a couple of things that you can try. If you add a little bit more vinegar, does it change the eruption? What about adding more water? Or perhaps changing the amount of baking soda you've added to your mix. These are all scientific variables that we can change that might change the outcome of the eruption of our own volcano. Have a go and see what happens to yours.